right now today is a spectacularly special birthday for one of our uh, one of our community broadcasting siblings. Triple I is turning 30 this morning, and to talk us through all of the activities and all the birthday celebrations, please welcome Richard Watts from the Smart Arts Program. How are you, Richard? I'm pretty well, pretty well, and certainly very stoked about Triple R turning 30. It's a remarkable kind of institution and a kind of a bit of a landmark. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In the age this morning, there's a massive fold out, which is uh, a two-page. It's got the grid. I know Smart Arts is on here, so if anyone wants to find out when it's on. Uh, and uh, so we've got the grid, we've got the the um, Party Like It's 1976, which is the big concert coming up. And um, and on the back there's the Triple R Sacred Sites, 30 years of Triple R. It's very so, exciting. So yeah, the Sacred Sites is a great little project. All these kind of different Melbourne institutions and landmarks, some which don't exist anymore, some which kind of are still around and just as vital, but things which over the last 30 years have been a part of what Triple R stands for, I guess, that kind of the notion of community and the diversity of Melbourne's community in art, in culture, and certainly in live music, which will definitely be reflected at the, the big kind of birthday bash coming yeah. up, which is next next Friday night at the Forum. It should be a great night. The whole kind of idea of partying like it's 1976 scares me a little bit considering what I used to wear in 1976. <laughs> well, Justin certainly has the mo for 1976. That's right. That's just true. not the hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Find yourself a nice Afro wig. That's it. It's all about there Afros. How many people did you know that actually had Afros? Oh, well, look, my memories of the 70s are hazy. Right. But, uh, I, was, yeah, you but I, I remember boy. lots of... Yeah, exactly. I was very small. I was in primary school. I remember lots of corduroy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm expecting to see some of that next Friday night at the Forum. Should be good fun. Tickets, I sh should say, uh, they sales end this coming Wednesday. Okay. So if people do want to get along to that gig, which will be good fun. Lots of good bands, Triple R House Band, the Moodists, DJs. You've got to get in quick to get some tickets next Wednesday for that. But there's so many other events as part of the birthday as well. That's right. So 30, the 30, um, 30 years in 30 days is one thing that um, I've heard publicised on Triple R. What's all that about? Well, that's essentially a 30-year uh, a, a package of not just Triple R's history, but everything happening around it, kind of uh, in 30 days. So 30 30 minute episodes, kind of broadcast every day on Triple R as of kind of yesterday. The first one went to air, and going to air 8:45 to 9:15 each day. If you miss them and all the little nuggets of musical and historical goodness they contain, they will be available on the Triple R website. Kind of pretty much the same day or thereafter. Yeah. So the first one is already up there, which given that today is actually the uh, the 30th anniversary to the day of the founding of what was then called 3RMT, kind of over the road at RMIT. And of course you can read all about it in this book. That's fantastic. That's amazing that um, the book's been put together. There's so much history and, um, and so much culture just jammed into, you know, the annals of of, uh, of Triple R and its history and everyone that you kind of meet in this industry seems to have had a connection with Triple R at some point through their journey. And if they don't work in the industry, so many people in Melbourne have a connection with Triple R anyway because it, it is one of the things that is great about Melbourne and, and kind of Channel 31 is ex exactly mm. the same. The, um, the notion of community, the sense of community is so strong in this city as a result of organisations like Triple R, as a result of so many different grassroots community organisations getting together to do their thing and Triple R supports that kind of activity as does Channel 31 and I think without things like Triple R, without the community media that we have, Melbourne would be a, it'd be a lot more like Sydney, it'd be a fairly <laughs> green and depressing That's place. And we don't want Melbourne to be any more like Sydney. No, we really no, don't. Not at all. What, what, other part, what other things are happening with the celebrations? Um, it, what's happening today? Is there anything special on air today? Well, the uh, kind of episode two of yep. uh, kind of 30 years in, in uh, 30 days is going to wear uh, in about ooh, just Probably under half an hour's minutes, time. Yeah. Right. So at, uh, at quarter to nine, so people can tune into 102.7. They could tune in at nine o'clock. Exactly, the catch the second half the and then get the first half on the Triple R website, which <laughs> is www.rrr.org.au. Uh, yeah. The book is being launched uh, on Monday night and will be available in good independent bookstores. It's published locally by the Volga Press, another a kind of independent Melbourne icon. Can I have a look at it, Richard? It's, I'm kind of excited to What's see it in print. Stuff? Do they keep a lot of archive stuff from yeah. the early days? And that's one of the beautiful things about the book that Mark Phillips, the journalist, has done. He's kind of, there's photos of early presenters, there's yeah. kind of old Radiothon posters from 25 years ago. Yeah. He's interviewed hundreds of people to try and find out how the station evolved, how it was set up, and how it ended up 
where it is today? It's, it's easy mm. to forget that it has been around for 30 years and it really has become an institution in Melbourne, like a complete mainstay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The fact that it was founded around the same time as things like Circus Oz, mm. for example, there was so much happening in Melbourne in the late 70s, so much artistic yeah. creativity. Why do you think that was? Was it something? Was it the Menzies government? Were... Well, kind of, it would have been the, the, the end, end of, of, kind yeah. of that whole conservative reign throughout the 50s and 60s, so mm. that kind of... And I think maybe... Gough Whitlam coming into power and shaking things up a little bit as well. Mises, and, yeah. that's it. I meant the Whitlam government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they could have sacked Menzies, it could have been good. So no. I, I've already mentioned the uh, party like it's 1976, the Triple R birthday nice. party at the Forum next week. There's also um, a Triple R birthday gig coming up as well. Right. So the party will be is going to be great because it's one of those things where all your food and drink covered in the in the price as well as the entertainment. Sweet. And there's a birthday gig at the ESPY featuring uh, Mac Romantics, Ground Components, Mountains in the Sky, lots of band DJs. Should be great. Fantastic. Well, for the party next week, you have to get dressed up, don't you? Because it's if it's like it's 1976, you've got to dress up a little bit 70s. But mm. you shouldn't necessarily dress up what you were wearing in 1976 because I'd be turning up in a matinee jacket and a nappy, I think. Well, I'd be in kind of like brown corduroy flares and a green skivvy. So not a good look, but I'd yeah. have to send my mother and dad. Would you? Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. a youngin. Yeah. I'd be wearing my brother's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you can dig something out of the wardrobe or hire something or borrow something from the folks, mm. that'd be great yeah. for, for the, the party at the forum. And the birthday gig at the ESPY, which is Sunday the 26th of November, pretty much come as you are. I think if you turned up in 1970s dress for that, kind of like, actually, hey, it's in St Kilda, like people may not bat an eyelid. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think anyone would notice. Yeah. How long have you been doing the Smart Arts show? Smart Arts, I've only been doing for about two years. Uh, before that, I was doing uh, a visual arts program. I've done film reviews, done guest spots, and started off doing graveyards like so many other announcers, kind of like right. wandering to the station at two, at just before 2 a.m., propping eyes open and trying to entertain people for <laughs> four hours. What gets you through the graveyard shift? Is, do you really are you just focus on the end prize of what you want to do, or is it? Uh, Ooh, is kind of uh, four to, hours. Mm. What, one of the things that gets me through graveyards when I I still do them sometimes and gets me through the show I do every week is when people ring up and express mm. enthusiasm for a song mm. or kind of say, oh, I kind of like I went to a gig you talked about last week. Uh. That knowing that you're doing a service for. Melbourne's really diverse communities, yeah. um, that gets it through. Yeah. So it's the same with me, doing the show. Yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's for, for the, the people. Absolutely yeah. for the people. <laughs> and the Triple R subscribers are a very loyal bunch. They're a massive extended family, aren't they? And for them, it will be a very big deal that Triple R is turning 30 today. Thank you for coming in, Richard. A very great pleasure. Thanks for having me, Very guys. nice to have you here. We're usually running out on the footy field together. And uh, it's Community nice to Cup be next doing... Year doing some work together, not in footy shorts. It is uh, Triple R turning 30. Get involved, get online and um, see how you can be part of the celebrations. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to check in with the news headlines. Don't go away.